Merry Christmas. It is Christmas Day. What a joy to bring a short devotion to you on Christmas Day. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the greatest gift ever that humanity and the entire creation has ever received. The gift of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Even as we celebrate Christmas again, bless us, help us understand the essence of Christmas yet again, clearly and sharply. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? for God to write his story. Shall we listen? Shall we now listen to the psalm? Today's psalm is taken from Psalms 85 verses 8 to 13. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. Their glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground, and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, well without end. The devotion today is based 
on the Old Testament lesson, the Isaianic vision of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 to 7. Can we listen to the word of God? Reading from the book of prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the road of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult, every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it and with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore the seal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of a heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, our rock and our refuge. Amen. Merry Christmas yet again. For a short reflection this morning, may I go back to the chorus that echoed in our ears a few minutes ago. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write his story? The Isaiahic vision is looking forward for the Redeemer, for the Messiah. And from that wonderful passage that was read, I would want to draw five words for our Christmas meditation this year. The first question is this, is there room in your heart for light? Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2, the people who walked in darkness, have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Dear friends, not just because of a pandemic that has affected us across this year, but also because of life's realities around us, it is an undeniable fact that the several hearts are today filled with darkness. People are groping in darkness, not able to know what the next steps are in life. Several people, be it children, be it young people, be it the adults or the elderly, there is a stark aimlessness that has crept into life, directionlessness that has come into life. Hearts are filled with darkness. It is here the entire expectation of the Messiah is centered around one word, light. Light to those in darkness. It has been the perennial prayer. Tamasoma Jodhir Gamaya. Lead us from darkness into light. And once you truly comprehend who this light is, the one who said, I am the light of the world, then we understand the essence of Christmas. It is a fact today that there are several hearts that dwell in the land 
of the shadow of death. Death is smiling at people around. We hear the dance of death around. A pandemic that took away several life is just one reason why death is smiling. People have lost or are losing the desire to live, the intent to live. And there is quite a lot of darkness in the shadow of death. And here, the Isianic vision says, into that shadow of death came in a great light, a great light. And therefore, the first and the most important question that we ask around Christmas is this, is there room in your heart for light? Is there room in your heart for light so that God can write his history, making you and me as protagonists of that story, of story of God, the story that God builds, the, the tapestry that God weaves for the future. Is there room in our hearts for light? The second question that this particular passage brings before us is this. Is there room in our hearts for joy? Isaiah, talking about the messianic vision, talks about the joy. And he explains that joy, the joy that is like the joy in a harvest. Imagine the barren land. Imagine tilling that barren land. Imagine sowing in that barren land. Imagine protecting the field, protecting the yield, expecting the yield. Imagine looking at the harvest and waiting for the harvest day and imagine harvesting the sheaves and gathering together. What a joyful experience of community is that. The joy that is in the Messiah would be like that joy of the harvest. So Isaiah says. The prophet goes on to say, it is like the joy of the people who rejoice when they divide the spoil. Imagine an unexpected a treasure hunt, finding fruit. The treasures, inestimable treasures are there. And you decide you're sharing the inestimable treasures. You get your, your part of it. And the joy that you have in getting that inestimable treasure. It is that joy, that joy that Christ, the inestimable treasure, brings to your life. And that's for it's, it's beautiful when we listen. You can come as you are, but it may set you apart. When you make room in your heart and you trade your dreams for his glory, then your heart is filled with joy. The heart overflows with joy. Yes, we live in a world of a lot of depression. We live in a world of quite a lot of impediments to joy. We live in a world where several, several people try shortcuts to joy, but do not find it. We sing bags of gold can never buy the happiness that you're hunting for. Happiness is not the cars you have, the costumes you have. Happiness is not the journeys that you undertake. Happiness is knowing Jesus. The joy that you find in living with Jesus, the law, the joy that you find when you realize that your sins are taken away, the joy that you find when you realize that a new beginning is possible, the joy that you find when you realize there is a destination that is new that you are pursuing, the joy of sharing. The story is told about a very, very poor young boy. Christmas time came. It was Christmas cakes everywhere for his friends, but he did not have anyone to give him a Christmas cake. He tried going to one of the bakers in town, asking them, will you give me a cake? And they said, well, bring the cost. 
and you will get the cake. So far away, in one corner, through a glass window, he kept looking at the different kinds of cakes in the bakery. Nobody bothered about this young man, this young boy staring at the cakes until suddenly one man who was buying cakes and walking out of the door saw this little boy clinging on to the glass window. He called him nearby and asked him his name and then shared with him a cake. This boy said, well, I do not have money to give you. And this man said, well, this is my Christmas gift. The young boy was so overjoyed. He received the gift. And so the story goes, he asked the question, are you Jesus? Hearing the question, this man was so thrilled. He went back home and told his little family, I saw Jesus today. He was there outside the baker, waiting for someone to come by. I'm sure it was Jesus. What a joy, what a joy, sharing a Christmas cake with Jesus. The young boy went back to his little group of friends. He told him, here is a Christmas cake. And do you know who gave me this Christmas cake? Jesus himself. What a joy, what a joy. Dear friends, the joy of sharing, the joy of sharing. And if we have Jesus in our hearts, we truly understand what this joy in Christ, the joy of redemption, the joy of sharing, the joy of understanding the salvific purpose of God is. And therefore, the Christmas question is, is there room in your heart for joy? for God to write his story. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write his story? The third question. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write his story of liberation. Write his story of freedom. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 4, we read thus, For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor. The hymn writer wrote, Mother holds the promise right, every wrong will be made right. The road is straight, the burdens light, for in his hands he holds tomorrow. People who live in the yoke of burdens around us today. What is Christmas? Christmas is the story of Christ the Liberator who breaks open those yokes who breaks free people from those yokes and let them go free. Today around us, as we celebrate Christmas, we find several people living under the yoke of poverty. The pandemic only made it worse. We see several people living under the yoke and burdens of oppressive regimes. We see several people living under the yoke of systemic violence. We see several people living under the yoke of patriarchy. We see several people living under the yoke of the deplorable caste system. We see several people living under the yoke of gender violence. We see several people living under the yoke of marginalization because of their gender identities, of their different abilities, of their exclusions from society, from the main line. Quite a lot of burdens. And Christ the Liberator, Christ the Liberator breaks free, breaks us free from the yokes 
and the burdens. The staff in the shoulder, the road of the oppressor. The oppressor takes different forms. Is there room in our heart for God to write the story of liberation? The story of liberation is being able to see the yoke that burdens people around us. Is being able to see the rods that binds them down. Is being able to see the rod of the oppressor. It is the decision that you cannot be silenced. Silence is the greatest of the human right violations, creation right violations. Christ the liberator, Christ the liberator strengthens you, strengthens you fully knowing in his hands he holds tomorrows and those tomorrows of the kingdom of God are free from the yokes and burdens. And you're called to participate in the intervention of God in Christ to redeem people from the bondages that they are in. It is the action of God where you and I are called to be participants. The fourth question, is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for the Prince of Peace? For God to write his story. Verse 6 is a Christmas verse that we sing around. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon him. His name shall be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Yes, Christmas is all about a wonderful counselor making room in your heart. Jesus, the wonderful counselor, a great listener and a precious guide. Even when we ask, where is God? Where is God in all of this? Here is the counselor. Here is the guide. Here is the soft, simple voice that hold on to your hands and say, just believe. He is the mighty God who keeps reminding us that there is nothing my God cannot do. He is the everlasting Father who reminds us this temporary phases of difficulties will pass away. God who is in control is inviting to a, you to an eternal relationship of great joy. And who is he? Yes, there is turbulence around. Yes, there is pain around. Yes, there is agony around. Yes, there is war around. Yes, there is quite a lot of anxieties around. But amidst all this and through all this, he is the Prince of Peace. Is there room? Is there room in your heart for the Prince of Peace? And finally, the most important question of Christmas is this. Is there room in your heart for justice? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write his story? Why is the Messiah coming? Verse 7. To establish his kingdom with justice from henceforth ever forever. A family that found no place in the keeper's door, it was for this a child was born, to save a world so cold, so hollow, so full of injustice. The sleeping town of Bethlehem did not know that a savior who had come home has come to heal their sorrows, heal them from the stripes of injustice, heal them into a world of justice. And justice happens only when each person, every part of creation gets what is entitled to them, what is their rightful due, rightful entitlement. Dear friends, therefore, at Christmas time, we asked these simple questions. Is there room in our hearts for light so that God could write his story of light in and through you and me. Is 
there are room in your heart for joy so that God could share the joy, joy that is possible in Christ through you and me, with you and me. Is there room in your heart for freedom so that God could continue his salvific liberative intervention in history? Is there room in your heart for peace so that God could establish the kingdom of peace where the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, would stay with us. Is there room in our hearts for justice, for the passion of justice, for justice of God to reign? And the Christmas question is, is there room in our hearts for Jesus so that God could make his history with you and me as participants? God can make his future with you and me, participants in the making of the future of God. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for Christmas. Lord, help us to make room. Make room in our hearts for the light, for the joy, for the freedom, for the peace, for the justice that Christ embodied. Help us make room for Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's now listen to the closing hymn. benediction. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you as you have a very happy Christmas. Amen.